Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021, live from Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We have two live sets, two remote studios, over 100 guests on theCUBE at this year's show. And we're really excited to dig in to the next decade in cloud innovation. And welcome from the keynote stage, Mark Ruin, the Chief Network Officer and EVP at Dish Network. Mark, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Enjoyed your keynote this morning. So, so big news coming from AWS and Dish. You guys announced uh, in the spring, a telecom industry first. Dish and AWS have formed a strategic collaboration to reinvent, reinvent 5G connectivity and innovation. Let's, let's really kind of dig into the AWS Dish partnership. Yeah, you know, we're putting um, our network in the cloud, which uh, allows us to have a different speed of innovation and uh, a much more collaborative way of bringing new technology. And, um, and then we have access to all the developer ecosystem of AWS, so that's, that, but that's a, as you say, it's a world first to put the telco in the cloud. And the, the, so the first time the 5G network is going to be in the cloud, and it was also announced, I'm curious, uh, uh, that Las Vegas is going to be the first city live. Here we are sitting in Las Vegas. What's the, uh, any status you can give us on that? Yeah, so we, we're building across the US, and uh, Las Vegas is a place that you know, we've built and now we're beta testing. So that's where we have all run and uh, we're testing all sorts of uh, traffic and capability with uh, our people and partners live here uh, at the same time that we have the, the reInvent. And uh, at Beyond Go Run, we're also starting to test new capabilities like orchestration, slicing, things that we've never seen in the industry. So that's pretty exciting. I have to ask you, in the telecom industry there, there's been an inflection point around cloud and cloud impact. ORAN is opening up new opportunities. What is the telecom industry getting and missing at the same time? Because it seems to be two schools of thought. Cloud, yeah. pro-cloud, ORAN, and then yeah. hold on to the old way. What's your... I think everybody uh, would like to go to ORAN and the cloud. Uh, but it's not as easy if you have a, a, a big install base. So for us, you know, it's, we're all uh, new, it's, it's easy, so we can adopt the, the best technology and the, and the newest. Uh, but of course, if you have a big install base, there is going to be a transformation, if you wish. So, you know, people are, starting, are trying to set the expectation of how much time it will take. But for us, you know, we are, we're moving ahead because we're, we're building a, a completely new network. It's so. a lot easier then. Well, <laughs> what is relative term? It, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's certainly much more fun, and we, can, you, we don't have to make compromises, right? So, but it's still a lot of work. You know, we're discovering, we're learning a, a lot of things with our partners. What's the, if you have a clean sheet of paper or a green field, what's the playbook to roll this out uh, across, say, a campus or a large geographic area? Yeah, so pretty much you have the same uh, capability in terms of coverage and capabilities than anybody else, but we can do it in an automated manner. We can do it with uh, much thinner and efficient hardware, you know, pretty much IT hardware with a few accelerators, so a bit of jargon, but you know, we just have access to a larger ecosystem and much more silicon and all the good things that are coming with the cloud. Talk to us about some of the unique challenges of 5G that make running it in the cloud so much more helpful. And then also, why did, you, did DISH decide to partner with AWS? Clearly you have choice, but I'd love to know the backstory on that. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been in the telco industry forever and I've always seen that our speed of innovation was too slow. The telco is very good at reliability. You know, your phone always works. Um, it's very reliable. You can have massive traffic. But the speed of innovation is not fast enough. And the, the applications that are coming on the cloud are much faster. So what we wanted to marry is the reliability of the telco and, and all the knowledge that exists with the speed of the cloud. And that's what we're doing with AWS, right? bringing their ecosystem into our ecosystem to, to get the best of the two worlds. Lots of transformation in the vertical industries we heard from Adam today on stage. Vertical with AI, machine learning. How does that apply in the telco world? Because it's an edge. Yeah. You got see sports stadiums, for instance. You're seeing all kinds of home impact. How is vertical specialization? Yeah. So evolving? what what is unique about the cloud is that you can observe a lot of things. You know, in the cloud, you have access to data, so you see what's happening, and then you use a lot of algorithms. We call it machine learning analytics 
to make decisions. Now, for us, it means if you're a stadium, you're going to have a much better visibility of what's happening. Where is the traffic? You know, are people moving in, are moving out? Are, are they going to, to buy some food or what? So you see the traffic and you can adapt. The way you steer the traffic, the way you distribute video, the way you, you distribute entertainment to how people are moving, because you can observe what is happening in a network, which you can't do in a, in a classic or legacy uh, 5G network. So once you observe, you can have plenty of ideas, right? And you can start innovation, you can mix a lot of things and offer new services. In this last 22 months when we saw this rapid pivot to work from home, and now it's work from anywhere, right? We talk about hybrid cloud, hybrid events here, but this hybrid work environment. Talk to me about the impact that, that Dish and AWS are going to have on all of those companies and people who are going to be remote and working from the edge for maybe permanently. Yeah, as you say, you know, what is important is that people want to have access to the, to the cloud, to the services, to the enterprise from wherever they are. So, as, as a software architect, I need to make sure that we can follow them and offer that service from wherever they are in a seamless manner. Today, if you're making a phone call, you don't have to think. If you're connecting to the web, you know, through Wi-Fi, through this and that, you have to think. We want to make it as simple as making a phone call in the past where you're always connected, you're always secured, you always have access to your data. So that's really the ambition we have. And of course, with the new remote habits, the video conferencing, that's a perfect time to, to come with a new offer. And the, the trend also is moving towards policy-based, you mentioned understanding video and patterns. Having that differentiated services capability in real time is a big deal. Yeah, that's a big deal. Actually, what enterprise want, they want to manage their policy. So they want to decide what traffic gets a premium access and what traffic can be put in the background. You want to update your, your computers, maybe that's not a premium price for that, you can do it at any time, but you want to have real-time customer service and support, you want premium. And who am I to decide for an enterprise? Enterprises want to decide. So what we offer them is the tools to create their policy, and their policy will be a competitive advantage for them when they can differentiate. And this brings up another point I want to ask you, you brought this up earlier about this, the uh, ideas, the creativity that enables with cloud, you mentioned ideas will come out. Yeah. These are, this is where the developers now can really code. This is the whole theme of this Pathfinders keynote, you were up on stage. This is a real opportunity to add value. Doing all the heavy lifting in the top of the stack and enabling yeah. new use cases, new applications, new expectations. You know what I tell to my, my engineers, my dream as an engineer is to be uh, developer friendly. I want people to come to us because it's fun to work in our environment and, and try things. And a lot of the ideas the developers will have won't work, but if they can spin it off very fast, they will move to that killer application or killer service very fast. So, my job is to bring that into to them so that it's very easy to consume and, and try live and you know, just. It's like bringing candy to a baby. It's like here, yeah, code. Play, play and show us, right? <laughs> and have fun and, uh, and discover it for yourself and decide for yourself. I got to ask you a question, you've been in the telecom for a while. We've been saying on theCUBE earlier in our intro keynote analysis that we're now living in an era with SaaS applications, no more shelfware, now with purpose-built applications that you're seeing now and horizontally scalable, vertically integrated machine learning. You can't hide the ball anymore around it, what's working. Yeah. You can't put a project out there and say, no, you can't justify it, you can't put, you can't put lipstick on that, you can't no, put you icing have, on that bad cake. Yeah, it's, it's all the point of about beta testing and market adoption. You try, you put it there, it works. You celebrate, doesn't work you try again, right? That's the way it works. And, and in Telco, you're right, we were cooking for a year, two years, three years, and saying, oh, you know what? That's what you need. Uh, it doesn't work like this. It's faster now. Yeah, yeah. And people want to be able to influence, and they want to say, I like it, I don't like it. And the market is deciding. Speaking of influence, one of the things we know, we talk a lot about with AWS and their guests, is their customer first, customer obsession focus. So, you know, the whole reason we're here is that, that is to serve the customer. Talk to me about how, how customers and joint customers are influencing some of the design choices that you guys are making as you're bringing 5G to the cloud. Yeah, so what is important for us, we have two dreams, right? The first one is for consumers. We want consumers to have access to the network so that they feel that they are a VIP. And often, I know you and I, sometimes when we're connected to the network, we drop a call, we don't get the feeling we're a VIP, so that's something, that's a journey for us to make people feel like they get a service, and the network is following them and caring about them. For the enterprises, 
you want to let them decide what they want. You were talking about policy, billing. They want to come with their own rating engine. They want to come with their own geographical maps, like here I have traffic, here I don't need coverage. So we want to open up so that the enterprise decide how they invest, how they spend the money on the network. Giving control back to the end user, whether that's yeah. a consumer or an yeah. enterprise. Absolutely, giving control to the end user and the enterprises. And we're there to support and accelerate the, the service for them. Mark, I want to ask you about leadership. You mentioned all these new things are there, your dreams and it's happening, giving engineers the uh, canvas to paint their own future. It's got to be fun, it is fun. As you're affecting that change, what can people do as leaders to create that momentum to bring the whole organization along? Is there tricks yeah. to the trade? Is there best practices? Absolutely, there are best practices. Um, we, we are very much following DevOps where, you know, you, as a leader you don't know. You're just learning and you're exposing and you're sharing. Uh, we're also creating an open world where we're asking all our partners to be open. Sometimes, you know, they feel like a bit uh, challenged, like, do I want to show what I'm doing? And we say, yeah, show because you're benefiting between each other. Um, and then you want to, give tools to your engineers and your marketers to be fast. Speed, 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 so that they can just play and, and learn. And uh, at the end of the day, you said it, it's all about fun. You know, if it's fun, it's easy to do. Yeah, we're having fun here, that's for sure. That is true, we always have fun here. L last question for you is, talk about some of the things that AWS announced this morning. Lots of stuff going on in Adam's keynote. What excites you about this continued partnership with, between AWS and DISH? Yeah, we were, we were surprised and, and so happy about AWS' uh, answer to, when we came in, we're the first one to come big time in the, in the, as a telco and the cloud was not ready. To be honest, it was enterprise and, and uh, data cloud. And AWS went, is going all the way with us to transform their cloud to make it a telco friendly cloud. So we have a lot of discussions about networking, routing, service level agreements, I mean, a lot of things that are very technical. And they are a true partner innovating with us. We have a roadmap, we have ideas, and uh, that's pretty unique, so great partner. I was going to say, it sounds like a really true yeah. trust and partnership. Yeah, yeah, we're sharing ideas and challenging uh, each other all the time, so that, that's really great. Awesome, and, we, and end users benefit, consumers benefit, enterprises benefit. Mark, thank you for joining John and me on the program today. Enjoyed your keynote, enjoyed hearing more about DISH and AWS and what you're doing to power the future. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the global leader in tech coverage.